gentlemen, I want to thank you guys. Uh, this is David from Davis Distribution. Thank you for joining us on today's Just Add Power webinar. Uh, we have Al from Just Add Power. I was going to go over everything. Before he starts, please note to keep yourselves muted. If you guys do have any questions or issues, just type them out. We'll make sure that Al gets them. So thank you. Uh, Al, the floor is yours. Cool, cool. Let me uh... – can everyone see my screen? Is my uh, David? Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. I can. Perfect. All right. Let me get this one thing set up here. Cool. Um, so yeah, my name is Al, um, and I'm doing the webinar or presentation here on the Just Add Power system. Um, so as you might know, and hopefully know. Um, we created the category of video over IP or specifically HDMI over IP. Um, so let me introduce myself, I guess, on this slide if it decides to move here. Uh, and I'm having technical difficulties. Let me try this again. Cool. So I go by Al, but my first full name is Al Haji. Um, if you need to reach me at all, you can reach me at either Al at Just Add Power um, or even Al Haji at Just Add Power. That is my direct cell phone number um, as well as that sales number. So that 800-615-0206 gives you different options of getting a hold of someone from Just Add Power. Uh, option one would go to the sales office. I would say majority of the time, a phone call to the sales office is going to be answered by myself. I do have access to um, answer calls on my cell phone, so it forwards to my cell phone if I'm not in the office. Um, but there is also an office manager here at the Just Add Power sales office. Um, his name is Nick Mavriadoglu. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have uh, dealt with him in the past. Um, so if I'm not able to answer, um, or if I don't answer, more than likely Nick will answer it. Or you can leave a voicemail, and any one of us can answer that voicemail immediately from you guys at Davis or even the dealers. It doesn't matter, or even to the end users. It doesn't matter. Um, any, everyone has access to this number. Um, that being said, the office is located at... Paul Yeah, yeah. Just thought you were getting Hello? Hello? Are we good? Hello? Okay. Um, so sales office is, uh, being said, sales office is lo located in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, we do uh, do webinars, trainings, traveling um, outside of Cincinnati, obviously, nationwide from your East Coast to your West Coast. Um, and we do have different sales agents all throughout. Um, so any kind of questions that you guys are going to have, dealers are going to have, we're going to be able to answer that for you. Being said in that way, um, headquarters is actually in um, Largo, Florida. So any other calls going through, so from sales support um, to support in general, uh, as well as logistics, um, anything that deals with the headquarters itself, um, it's going to be option two through our support team. Um, support team is probably one of those key differentiators between us and our competitors. Um, our support team is top notch. Uh, our support team, A, obviously knows the Just Add Power system, the individual pieces and how it operates, as well as any of our third-party partners from Luxel to um, the control systems that you're going to find out there that your integrators are going to be using. Um, we do have a handful of drivers for your popular uh, control systems that can be used with our Just Add Power system, um, and our team knows it. Boots to the ground. I don't know if you've ever been to headquarters to do some training. I highly encourage that, being led by Eric. Um, but they'll give you a tour of uh, headquarters itself from um, the support room to the testing facilities to the training room. Um, but anytime that you're going to be able to call from 8 to 8 Eastern time, Monday through Friday, you will get a person to answer. If not, I, I encourage the individual to leave a voicemail. Um, there are times that they do get inundated with calls, 
and they get busy, but if you leave a voicemail, they will get back to you as soon as possible. So, as a company, just at Power, you probably heard of this, older, older than 25 years. You're, you're, a lot of times people are not understanding that Just Add Power has been a company for that long, um, especially with handling with HDMI distribution. So specifically with uh, AV over IP, Just Add Power pretty much created that category roughly about 10 years ago, starting with our first generation of product, kind of focusing on um, your lower resolutions up to 1080 with our 1G, and then the introduction of our 2G, um, with the blue boxes that uh, did HD, which would be 1080p and below. Um, what this presentation is going to be about is obviously going to be for our newer product, which is going to be the 3G, which is 4K, as well as the replacement pieces that are uh, took the place of the blue boxes, which are called the 2G Omega 3G. That gives the max resolution of 1080. So. Quick definition, HD, HDMI over IP, I guess the, the Webster's uh, definition of it, HDMI data that is transmitted over network equipment that conforms to international recognized standards using the TCP IP communications protocol. In a nutshell, we are doing distribution through a network. Um, I like to add that it's not through the internet. Um, so you do not need the internet to do video distribution over IP. It is using a network switch, however. Um, being able to send those signals either through IP, commands through serial RS-232, um, or even IR, you're going to have the capability with the Just Add Power pieces. So the way that we do the distribution itself, it's limitless. It doesn't matter how many inputs or outputs that you're going to have within the system you are going to match the right transmitters and the right receivers based on the size of your distribution. There is no matrix box. Uh, in a nutshell, we are creating a matrix system with a network switch. You are going to be using a layer 3 gigabit switch. Uh, we do have specific models to do VLAN switching. Um, however, there are options to do other switches based on whatever is needed for the solution. So since we're using a network switch, um, your only limitation when it deals with your size is really going to be that network switch, either the static form of that network switch or even being able to stack switches to increase uh, your size of your system. Um, there is no limitations when it deals with it. So I like to say that the hardest decision that integrators are going to make when it deals with building a Just Add Power system is to make sure that that network switch is going to be big enough to hold the system that you are designing. So no wasted inputs or outputs. We don't go by a static form of 4x4, 8x8, 16x16. It's a matter of what do I need as an amount of sources going to what I need for the amount of displays. Um, the software built-in does grow or it can be as big as 4,000 to 65,000, and that's straight out of the box. No pre-programming needed other than configuration to let the system know that it's going to be that big. Um, 2 by 9, 13 by 56, uh, it doesn't matter. You're, like I said, the, your limitation is really going to be on the network switch and being able to have the right amount of um, ports on there for your system. Distance. And we're talking about 4K when it deals with um, our newer generation product. Um, and we'll talk about point to point. Distance is 100 meters. And that distance can be from our transmitters to the switch 100 meters. And then the switch to the actual receivers could be 100 meters. Um, you can increase those distances with um, stackable switches. Uh, but now you're moving from 100 meters to, in many cases, miles in distances, um, especially with college campuses or wide open floor plans. Uh, so there really isn't any kind of limitation when it deals with distance itself. Um, those 100 meter distances can be increased by just adding a simple um, unmanaged gigabit switch in between either point to point or even from network switch in between that 100 meters to a, a receiver. Whatever way that needs to be utilized, you're able to do that. It's just a matter of recharging that IP signal from that 100 meters um, distance to increase in that distance itself. So since we're dealing with data, um, wall plates, couplers, 
wall plates, couplers, keystones, patch panels is not an issue. Um, it's an encode to decode process. So transmitters are the encoders. Um, receivers are the um, decoders themselves. That being said, um, in order to do full distribution of even our 4K product, you need at least Category 5E. Doesn't need to be shielding, shielded. However, if there is going to be any kind of electrical inter uh, interference, I think it's up to the integrator to be able to recognize that and use shielding if they need to. Obviously, using whatever is the standard with category cabling um, that's in um, the field right now. But we just need at least 5E to do video distribution of 4K. So different ways that you can use just that power. So I talked about the different formats that you can go to from 3 by 8 to 4,000 um, to 65,000. Those numbers are going to equate to transmitters and receivers. So every one of your sources will get an individual transmitter or even the rack mount, um, rack mount multi input transmitters, but you are still matching transmitters per source and every one of your displays are going to be able to have a receiver. Um, we do have some options to um, kind of play around with uh, multiple receivers onto a display or uh, having receivers connected to each other coming out of one port, and I'll be able to show you that. But first example of being able to use the Just That Power system is point to point. So you can connect the transmitters and receivers to increase or to send a distance of 4K, a simple distribution, um, directly from a Just That Power piece. They are all PoE devices, so they need to be provided with power. Power does not come with the just add power, eh, plain on words, right? Just add power transmitters and receivers. They are all PoE, and they get their power from the recommended switch. However, you do have the option of providing power to that. As long as you have power to the just add power pieces, you're good to go. Point to point or even one to many. And when I say one to many, one transmitter to many receivers. Um, in this case, uh, you do not need a layer three, I'm sorry, you do not need a managed switch to do one to many, as well as you don't have to configure your individual just add power pieces. Plug it in one transmitter into a network switch and then plug it in multiple receivers onto that same gigabit unmanaged switch really turns that unmanaged switch into a HDMI splitter. No configuration needed, um, straight out of the box, plug and play, plug in your sources, HDMI, and you're good to go. Once you get into really switching as, as well as making things, can someone mute really quick? Awesome. So as soon as you get into multiple transmitters, multiple receivers is where you get into specifics when it deals with the network switch. You will use a layer three gigabit um, managed switch. Uh, specifically to do VLAN switching, it's gonna be the Luxo and the Cisco brand. Um, and then obviously when it deals with the Luxo as well as Cisco, but specifically Luxo, um, the model numbers correlate to how many PoE ports are onto that network switch but they do have their AMS and their XMS series that is compatible with our configuration software. You will need also some sort of control system to say which input is going to which output. Does it matter if one source is going to 65,000 displays or individual sources are going to whatever individual displays that you need? You are gonna need some kind of control system. Um, either a control system or a control piece of software. We do have a free web browser enabled piece of switching application that can be used, um, or your traditional Crestron, Control 4, Savant, whatever it is, um, will be able to control this network switch to do the switching for you. All right, so really, so this presentation is going to go through the individual models, not really given all the feature benefits of the individual models, but giving you a brief overview, as well as the features that you're going to see in every one of the Just Add Power pieces from our, our 2G Omega 3G, 
as well as our 3G Plus, 3G POE 4K models, as well as we'll go over just briefly where you can find the information that you're going to need to do a configuration of a Just Add Power piece. So first, we'll start off with our newest generation product, which is the 3G models, 4K units themselves. And my screen froze. There we go. And so first, we'll start off with the transmitters. And one of our newer pieces of transmitters is our 709P2P. So I talked about being used as a point-to-point -point solution as well as needing to add power. Um, this kind of puts an asterisk to having to add power to every one of the Just Add Power pieces. This 709P2P can provide power to any receivers that are connected to it. So either a straight point-to-point -point or I'll show you a receiver that actually does daisy chaining um, that connects the receivers directly to each other, all being powered from one transmitter, this P2P. Power will not be sent with this device. You would have to use a third-party power. Um, power would being able to indicate how much power is used is going to be needed to know how many receivers are going to be on the endpoints themselves. You can have up to four um, just add power receivers uh, daisy chained together um, to have a point-to-point -point solution. Um, but this is our, one of our newest, the 709P2P, can be used for point-to-point. -point. Power is not going to be provided with this. Our newest transmitter is Dante. And really, when it deals with Dante, Dante is more of your – in your commercial environment. You're seeing Dante being used in conference rooms, um, huddle spaces, whatever things like that. You're seeing Dante being used in the commercial space itself. Um, not any different from any one of our transmitters when it deals with just that power itself, except being able to have audio over IP. Um, so being able to send that audio through the network itself, you're being you're you, being able to utilize this transmitter with the Dante system. Um, I'm not that versed in Dante itself. It's one of our newest ones, and I haven't been through the training. However, it does allow for up to eight channels of audio output all integrated into the same system. So you're not going to need to do anything special when it deals with adding this just that power Dante transmitter a matter of you having the right Dante audio distribution and being able to route that to it. Some of our other models. So these two models in particular, the POE as well as the Hi-Fi, uh, the 707 as well as the 717, uh, allow for uncompressed audio. Probably the most popular of the transmitters right now is that smaller one that you see on the side, um, on the left side which is the 707, does uncompressed audio um, from 7.1, Dolby Atmos, um, Dolby Digital, whatever it is, you're going to be able to utilize this transmitter. It does not have any kind of audio extraction to channel or any extra inputs and outputs onto this transmitter. We do have a different model that I'll show on this next slide, but this is the most simplest of the transmitters that you're going to use in Just Add Power. The Hi-Fi model is basically the same thing except it has HDMI pass-through. So using this transmitter and needing that HDMI pass-through to go directly to an AVR, uh, maybe the integrator wants to utilize a display in the rack, um, whatever it is, you are going to get full audio and video coming out of this HDMI pass-through. It's strictly an HDMI pass-through. Um, a lot of competitors that do have their AV over IP pieces with HDMI pass-through, strictly as video. They do not let any kind of audio distribution going through this HDMI pass-through, which this Hi-Fi allows you to do. So the 707 is our newest of the rack mount uh, formed transmitters. Basically, it is four 707s into a 1U rack mountable chassis to make it the 747. Still the same format as in HDMI in, category out. On every one of our pieces, you're going to have the capability of doing RS-232 or even IR. However, this is exactly the same. Probably the only difference between this and our other rack-mountable chassis um, transmitter is this is still a POE piece. 
So even though it can provide power by itself through a power strip, it can also pull power directly off of the network switch. So if, if the integrator is running into issues of um, the power strip being filled up and wants to eliminate in some way or fashion on how many pieces are being pulled off of that power strip, this can be used to eliminate that use. Power can still be driven directly off of the network switch. Then we get to our kind of audio management transmitters themselves, the AVP models. Both of them are exactly the same. They're just two different formats. One's a single input transmitter, and one's a multiple three input uh, transmitter. So they all do, or both of them do two-channel extraction. They both have audio inputs, uh, as well as the ability to um, put, let me add, two audio inputs from mic in as well as line in can be used in any way that you'd want to use it, even though they're labeled in that way. But they both have the capabilities to do anything that you needed to do um, when it deals with being able to do two-channel extraction for your audio matrix or even input an audio directly from the transmitter through your distribution system. Next in the line are the wall plates. So overall, everything about Just Add Power is proprietary. From the boxes, the chipsets, well, um, the Adobe processor chips that we're using, the processor chips that are built in, um, everything is proprietary to Just Add Power. Um, assembled in Florida, we are a U.S. company. This is going to be the only piece that's not assembled in Florida. It's actually assembled in Seattle. In many cases, uh, will be a build to order. Uh, we do keep in stock a uh, majority of our um, wall plates in stock would be the white or black two gang pieces, the 717 WP2, as well as the 714. Uh, I don't have my four gang on here. Sorry about that. The 717 WP2 is the basic of our wall plate transmitters themselves. Um, very simple, just like the 707. It does have HDMI as well as VGA capability on that. It is auto sensing when it deals with being able to uh, use VGA or HDMI without having to do any kind of manual switching to indicate which one of those sources you're using. It does have a toggle switch for that if that's what the integrator wants to utilize. However, it's not needed to be used. It is auto sensing. And let me just show you the 714, if I have it, there it is. So the 714, 718WP4 is the four gang version of our, w, uh, of our wall plates, of our transmitters themselves. Uh, like I said, they are not assembled in Florida. They are uh, assembled over in uh, Seattle, Washington. We do keep a, a large quantity of stock of the white and black versions of these wall plates. We do give the option of having Leviton as well as Lutron colors. That's all indicated on our price sheet. I'm sure Davis has that available too. Um, so allow roughly about two to three weeks in advance when ordering any of the specialized colors. In many cases, that can be uh, fulfilled a lot sooner, but it's always safe to keep those uh, numbers in hand. Um, but the only difference between this WP2, WP4 and the WP2 is the WP4 allows for audio extraction directly off of that transmitter. It does as well have a um, mic in and a line in. So if you need a wall plate that needs line in or even mic in, this will definitely have to be the one that you would use. Um, or if you need audio extract, extraction directly off of the transmitter, the wall plate transmitter, this is going to be the wall plate that you would have to use. Receiver-wise, the AVP as well as the PoE. PoE is the most popular of the receivers themselves. Um, the AVP allows you to have multiple things happening on the receiving end from stereo, two-channel stereo extraction directly off of the receiver. In many cases, this receiver is used for audio matrices. Um, 
to uh, output any kind of audio directly to an audio matrix, as well as USB capability. So our pieces, transmitter and receiver on the AVP models have USB 2.0, and that's strictly for control. So being able to utilize the Just Add Power system as K with KVM switching, you can utilize with the AVP models. Having a centralized um, computer connected to an AVP transmitter, as well as whatever display has an AVP receiver with a wireless mouse, wireless keyboard, you have full control of that that computer coming through those AVP models. One of our newest receivers is the 509 PoE, uh, dubbed named the Daisy Chain. This will allow you to Daisy Chain or connect up to four uh, just add power receivers. Um, so really, I guess the the true math or the easiest way to describe it would be three 509s daisy chain with a 508, which, I'll, uh, which I showed here, but at the end, because you can have up to four um, just add power receivers all being controlled off of either one port or connected directly to a 709 P2P. So with that, that 509, you have the capability of having network pass-through for your display that needs um, IP control or even internet access, um, as well as having allowing any kind of appliance to have network access outside of the Just Add Power piece. Each one of the Just Add Power receivers um, actually have a DHCP server built in that will allow for any network access needed for a network appliance from a Apple TV um, to a sound bar or even um, for your IP control or even for your smart TVs. Whatever way you want to utilize it, you're able to use, utilize it for network pass-through or even daisy chain in it in order to make a video wall coming out all of one port on your network switch. Um, so typically this would be used for a, a, a retrofit. You're not able to send out cabling to a location um, that your, your end user wants to have multiple displays. You're able to connect multiple Just Add Power receivers as long as you're using the right receiver, all coming out of one network port and being able to create something like a video wall. Next lineup is going to be our Omega Series. Um, Omega Series is the direct replacement of our 2G system. So you have a VGA model, which is the 716. You have the 705 and the 505, the very simple version of the transmitter and receiver. Um, no audio outputs, no audio inputs. It's strictly HDMI in, category out, or category in, um, HDMI out. And probably the most popular of those uh, uh, of the units when it deals with the Omega series. These are direct replacement of the 2G. So any existing systems that are blue boxes that need to get a new transmitter, new receiver. Um, you will be able to use this Omega series without any kind of issues. The 715 and the 515 are your audio management pieces, allowing for audio extraction directly off of the transmitter itself, um, as well as the receiver. It does have an HDMI pass-through and the capability of doing KVM switching, just like you have on the AVP models, but KVM switching for centralized or decentralized computers. The 725 is uh, an SDI transmitter. Uh, so anybody that's doing any kind of uh, live broadcast that's going to be using the Just Add Power system can easily use this transmitter within the system itself. This should be in the previous slides, but it is a transmitter. Um, we do have an SDI version and a TVI version. So really you're going to see this used in, um, I guess, in concert halls, um, house of worship, or even a DJ booth that might have a camera that's showing the crowd or audience or whatever it is. Um, it's still the same, complete, same setup when it deals with the transmitters and receivers. It's just a different input that allows you to do distribution with just that power. A couple lineups when it deals with accessories. The rack mountable unit allows you to have any generation piece connected into a rack mount. Uh, fits 13 across, depending on the format or the size of the transmitter and receiver. Um, you can um, 
get it takes about five units on a rack itself. If you're using the, the smaller generation or the smaller format transmitters and receivers takes about three U's on a on a rack. Um, but fits our single input transmitters can be used for the newer generation as well as the previous generation all across whatever way that you want to utilize. We do have the flux capacitor, so you're able to do control of your system either through serial RS-232, IP control, as well as the ability to do IR. It is not an IR pass-through. It's IR over IP. What we're basically doing is changing an RS-232 slash serial command into IR, and it's only needed. So the benefit of that is it's only needed on the endpoint that needs to be controlled. So just because you want to control your, your television via IR through your distribution network does not mean you have to have it on the transmitter as well as the receiver. If you need IR control for your TV, you are just going to use that one flux capacitor on that one receiver to utilize IR on that TV for power on, power off, or even volume control, whatever it is that you want to utilize it in that way. So, David, I'm not able to see my um, chat. Are there any questions out there that I can uh, answer before I go through some uh, simple um, install, I guess, samples? I, I don't see any questions, Joel. We do you? Yeah, we don't have any questions on the chat just yet, but I will let you know if we get any. Okay. Yeah, please let me know if there's something that you want to hear that I haven't gone through. I can run back on that. Um, but I'm trying to do this all within a, a time to keep you guys uh, um, on here just as long enough for that hour and then get back on to whatever that you need to do for the day. But just hit me up at any time that you need to for me to explain anything. So I'm going to go through a little, a couple little sample uh, when it deals with uh, install. One commercial is one residential and how you can mix and match the just that power transmitters and receivers. Um, one thing that I like to utilize and like to show is there is a roadmap on how to choose a just add transmitter, just add power receiver, all based on what the solutions needed. This is located on the website, um, on the support side of the website, support.justaddpower.com, um, and it's a simple flow map um, that shows you from transmitter, what exactly that do I need as in resolution? Is it 4K to 1080? Do I need audio management? Do I not need audio management? And I'll end to the right transmitter, the right receiver that's needed for the project. Being said, transmitters and receivers can be mixed and matched within a system depending on what's needed on the input as well as the output. So in this very simple residential sample that I have going on, we have multiple two-channel zones that are in this small residence as well as multiple video zones. We also do have in this living room or a little, um, uh, I guess, huddle space that they might have in the house itself, a surround zone. So being able to use the Just Add Power system to get multi-channel zone as well as two-channel zone is all done by just mixing and matching based on what's needed for each area. So the first thing that you would tackle to be able to get your two channel zones, obviously these are your sources, a couple direct TV boxes, Apple TV, a security DVR, as well as an Xbox One, is being able to make sure that I have the right transmitters based on what do I need for my two channel zone. So for my direct TV boxes that are going to utilize uh, two channel zones, I'm going to use the 718 AVP. So being able to get those those the signal from the Just Add Power or extract audio directly off of Just Add Power, you're going to be using the AVP models. Since the security DVR does not need any kind of audio coming out of it, we are going to still utilize the 707. So since since it's just utilizing the, the audio and video, no extraction, you're going to be able to use that. Obviously, all being connected to an audio switch, so it's going to be a third-party audio matrix not, that is not a Just Add Power piece.
So obviously you're going to need a network switch based on whatever size of the system that you have. You're going to pick the right net recommended network switch. And then for each one of my display zones, I am going to use a 508 PoE. So now I have two channel zone in every one of my video zones, but then I still have to utilize a multi-channel zone um, for that one living room. So in order to, use, to utilize multi-channel, I am going to use a, fi a separate 508 PoE going directly to an AVR. This will allow me to get multi-channel into that one room with the AVR and then two-channel in all my other rooms, master bedroom, garage, whatever it is. So even though this is labeled as a casino, it's just a wide open uh, format or wide open floor plan itself with tons of sources, tons of displays. Typically when you're dealing with a commercial environment, um, two channel zone is what's utilized the most. Um, so being able to pick the right transmitters, the, might, the right receivers in order to utilize this. In many cases, depending on price that's gonna be used, um, in order to stay within a budget, you're, you're, you're going to see the 2G Omegas being u utilized the most. Um, so sources, we have multiple direct TV boxes, cable box. Um, you're going to need a local input. So if there's any kind of huddle space or conference room, whatever it is, um, we do have the wall plates that you'll be able to use, as well as being able to extract audio for your Apple TV. Tons of displays. Obviously, there's going to be two-channel audio zones that you're going to have to utilize. But these are the transmitters we're going to use. The 705 PoE uh, for all your sources when it deals with the cable box as well as, well as the direct TV box, um, as well as the 705 PoE for your Apple TV. You are going to have a wall plate for your local input for any kind of presentations that might, have in that, that might happen in that room. You're going to have utilize that with the wall plate itself. And then we did something a little different here. So in order to extract audio or even be able to send out audio, two-channel audio, when it deals with either the Apple TV or even the WP2, which has a local input that doesn't have any kind of um, audio extraction, we're going to get 505s for every one of the displays. And then we are also going to use, utilize a separate or two 515 POEs for your two-channel audio zones that you have going on within that floor space. So now you're able to switch your video without any kind of issues to the areas that need video, as well as switch audio to the right areas that need it from your two-channel zones from either the wall plate or as well as coming from the Apple TV or even your direct TV boxes. Being said, with such a big system, you are going to use stackable switches with this. Um, in this case, it's the 7048. Um, that is the stackable switch that you're going to find with Luxel connected with fiber, um, which can either be copper, but utilized with fiber. The switches are going to be in different locations of the floor plan or even copper if they're going to be right there in one rack you, uh, itself. Conference center, pretty much the same thing that you're going to see in that wide open form, format. Um, digital signage, whatever it is, all utilized in a 705 POE as well as the WP2. Um, 505s for every one of your displays and utilizing the 515. Um, for your audio zones with your three different two-channel audio zones that you have going on. But still being able to send out audio and video to your displays and being able to send out two-channel audio to the different audio zones that you have in the floor plan. One of the other pieces that we have is the Tyler. I'm sure you guys have seen that Tyler. Um, the Tyler is the unit that allows you to have multiple this, multiple pictures onto a display. So this is a network piece. This is all going to be connected to the network switch. So it takes up five ports at least onto your network switch. So that's always a piece to keep in mind if this is going to be added um, on, the, on the time of design or even in the future. 
that to make sure that that network switch is going to have at least five available ports for you to do this. You're going to notice that there's going to be four receivers that are built into this, as well as one transmitter. So what this allows you to do is pull any four sources that are in your system. It doesn't have to be static sources. So any one of your four sources coming from a 10-source system um, will be seen by this Tyler itself. And what's very cool about it is that it shoots it back into the system, and any Just Add Power receiver, receiver sees this Tyler as a brand-new source. So if you have a 10 by 10 system, you add this Tyler, now you have an 11 by 10 system. Every one of your displays from a 720 TV to a 4K 65 inch has access to this Tyler. So being able to utilize this in either residential or even commercial, um, using a projector, you can also um, have multiple Tylers, so you can have multiple um, inputs onto a display itself. So in, so in this case, we have a bar, multiple displays that are utilizing the Tyler that are seeing the same Tyler at the same time, um, but then a second Tyler is added in there that allows you to have more than just four sources on there. So seven sources, one Tyler looking at another Tyler, um, getting multiple, and it becomes kind of an infinite kind of possibility. The, the more sources that you want onto that display itself, um, all you're doing is just adding another Tyler to utilize that. So whatever configuration that's needed is whatever configuration that you're going to be able to use. It, it's all customizable. Um, the four that you see there, what is what it looks like directly out of the box with simple commands. But if you need to use any kind of customized mode, you're able to do that. Two sources, three sources. Uh, picture on picture, transparency, it's all up to you. It's all up to the, the integrator to utilize that. What you're going to see with a lot of competitors when they're uh, with their own tiling kind of uh, interface is that it's on the receiving end. So whatever display needs to see their tiler is going to be, is, will have a receiver that has a built-in tiler, um, which limits it only to that display. Um, with ours, allows you to see it on any display itself. Just a simple video. So audio can be moved around anywhere in that display. So what you're going to notice when we're doing the switching or the configuration, that green box gives that that end user, even the integrator, um, the indication of where that audio is coming from, and you can move that green box anywhere to whatever source it is. So you don't have to move that source to the green box. You can move that green box or where that audio is coming from to any one of those sources on the display. One thing that we did here is a feature that I'm going to talk about pretty soon is being able to utilize rotation of your um, images on the Just Add Power receivers. So utilizing the Tyler, you're able to put three sources side by side, rotate your display, and now you have um, three sources horizontal on a display vertically, um, on a display um, horizontal, Use, utilize in either digital signage or being able to utilize it in any way that you want possible. So the feature sets. Feature sets that, you're, that I'm going to go through, and it's just a couple of them um, or few, that can be utilized on either the 2G Omega or even the 3G 4K units. So obviously switch, instant switching is one of the things that you're going to get out, out of the AV over IP. Uh, switching is done within a frame rate. Um, it's done within 16 milliseconds, um, so you're not going to see any kind of black screen. You're not going to have any kind of handshaking issues. It's a very, very fast switching application that you're going to find from A, AV over IP, as well as just add power. Video walls. Video wall software is built into every one of our just add power receivers, so you don't necessarily need any kind of um, fully integrated 
control system in order for you to utilize Just Add Power video walls. Every one of our uh, Just Add Power receivers as well as um, transmitters have the capability of uh, integrator to go into the web UI. Just need someone to mute really quick. Yeah, I can't send CDC or Infante without going I heard CEC, but can you mute, mute really quick? I can talk about CEC, too, if you'd like. <laughs> um, but you're just going to the web UI or one of your transmitters or your receivers themselves, and you just indicate which part of the video wall any one of those receivers are going to be. You also have gap and bezel compensation. Um, so being able to utilize it in different ways from image rotation um, to different size displays in a video wall, you're going to be able to do that with the Just Add Power receivers without a control system. When you get into full dynamics of a video wall, um, and this is Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, Ohio, but once you get into fully dynamic video wall, so not a static image that's going to be a video wall every single time, but being able to have a video wall within a video wall or change in from single input to uh, multiple inputs onto that video wall is when you do need some kind of control software or control hardware that's really going to push those commands to a the network switch as well as your just add power pieces. So this is just an an example of having a fully dynamic video wall at Great American Ballpark. By the way, Great American Ballpark has the most inputs and outputs of just add power. I think it's roughly pushing close to 700 inputs and outputs uh, with a cross of our previous generation 2G, 1080, as well as the new generation 4K units. So anything around that ballpark uh, with video distribution from their restaurants, bars, along the concourse um, is all done with Just Add Power. Only thing that's not being done with Just Add Power is the scoreboard. And this is just the beginning of one of the bars that they had uh, when it was coming into play roughly about three years ago. Being able to utilize video wall capability, wrapping um, panels around a, a column with a video wall, they were able to do that from this integrator themselves. They purchased through Davis. Um, as well as having a full video wall in the background. So not only video walls, we can also do portrait video walls. So every one of our transmitters, every one of our receivers have the capability of rotating images in, in right now in 90 degree angles. So 90, 180, 270, um, and, and those degrees are all based on where the bezel is on the, on the display itself or the bottom bezel on the display. Um, but you're able to rotate those images to create video walls or you can create mosaic video walls. So this example that you have here is a video wall utilized in 55, 65, and 75 inch uh, Sony uh, XBRs. Um, so being able to utilize different size panels as well as moving them in different configuration can also be utilized on for a video wall. Um, this example that we have here is a bar that's in Cincinnati, Ohio. Actually, it's a brewery in Cincinnati, Ohio. They utilize it for individual panels that are showing ball games or whatever the source is displaying, as well as the vertical displays that you see there, utilizing it for any kind of spe uh, special guests for a DJ, or if they have any kind of presentations happening there. Um, they use it as digital signage, so a lot of different ways that they're being able to utilize either the regular panels or even the vertical panels within this. Just another example of utilizing just that power in different ways from video walls um, and just regular video distribution, fully dynamic video walls. This is located down in Texas, right across from the Dallas Cowboy practice facility. Although a commercial job with a lot of inputs and outputs, uh, this particular job was done by a three-man team. 
So configuration, when it deals with just that power, is going to be the same from a uh, 2 to 4 system to a 20 to 30 system. It's a matter of during the configuration process, telling the software exactly what you want as in inputs and outputs, and the software does it for you. Another feature that's built into the Just Add Power system is image pool, being able to utilize and see either for the end user what exactly is happening on any one of the transmitters, um, that's going in any one of the transmitters that's receiving a source um, or even any one of those dis displays that are receiving the source. Uh, so it's great for mom and dad to find out what the kids are watching on their TV or even trying to find out what's happening on a particular source um, so they can switch to that source itself. It's also great for integrators. So located in the web UI, um, as long as you have access to that network itself, you go into the web UI, and you can see exactly what's happening on that transmitter or receiver. It's a very cool and easy way to troubleshooting um, when it deals with your video distribution. Um, helps you to eliminate a lot of issues right away by knowing if that just that power transmitter is receiving source or even if that just that power receiver is sending out um, that source. You can utilize image push. Uh, so a very simple way of doing display digital signage. Um, coming from a computer, coming from a di digital sign machine itself, whatever it is that uh, that end user wants for their just add power system, they're able to do that with image push. We also have image pop, um, whatever emblem, um, insignia, or picture um, in JPEG format that needs to be pushed out can be pushed out through just add power. As well as I touched upon it a little bit, USB 2.0 being able to have full control of either a computer um, that's located centrally or decentralized throughout a system um, by connecting it to the AVP models, you're able to do that. This is an example of down in Miami um, at the one of the Nike flagship stores. So every one of the Nike flagship stores have converted over to AV over IP, specifically just that power throughout the floor plan itself. You have touch panels that have a just add power receiver. And in their IT room, every one of their um, computers are connected to a just add power um, transmitter that allows for the end user to browse the web, customize shoes, whatever it is that they want to do, um, keeping everything secure in the cold room and still having full video distribution throughout the floor plan. One of our newest features that's good for any one of our systems from our existing 2G Omega as well as 3G or even our legacy 2G is Plug Play Present. Plug Play Present allows you to have full automation without a control system. So this example is being able to utilize a conference room. So you're seeing a lot of huddle spaces being utilized now for presentations. Um, you're, obviously, there's big conference rooms, but smaller companies are just having these spaces that they can have their presentations or their meetings or whatever it is. In this case, we have a wall plate transmitter um, that's located on the table itself, as well as a just add power receiver behind the TV um, via CEC, IR, um, or RS-232 serial or even IP, you are able to send a command from a just add power transmitter directly to a just add power receiver. Um, in this example, we are using just a computer. Someone walks in, does their presentation. They plug in directly HDMI into the transmitter. You are sending one of those command signals um, directly to the just add power receiver to A, turn on that display, as well as go to the right input that that just add power receiver is connected to. That person's able to do their their presentation, um, auto sensing that there's no HDMI connected to that transmitter. Based on the command that the or the programming that that integrator has done, it can either turn off that TV or it will go to any previous input that that TV was on um, prior to that presentation being done. So this is all done without a control system. So. I'm sure you guys have witnessed the situation of looking for remotes, looking for an iPad, looking for some control um, interface. Um, by doing this very simple format, you're able to do that without any one of those.
and just utilize and just start um, point to point and being able to do um, serial commands. So three different ways that you can utilize serial commands from um, point to point, um, direct, or even API. So you do have full control of your endpoints when it deals with serial command. Just showing that it's 4K HDR. Um, so any kind of HDR format out there, we're able to handle. Um, HDR format is going to be 2160, 30 frames per second. Um, just want to make sure that that's uh, known and utilized out there to know that it's going to be 30 frames per second when it deals with that HDR format. Anything outside of 30 frames per second or above 30 frames per second, the Just Add Power system will not be supported. Uh, we can handle 60 frames per second. However, it is not going to be able to handle HDR. Um, so a majority of your sources that are out there that are doing 4K, you're able to lock in a resolution that's coming in. Um, if, if your end user or the integrator wants to uh, use HDR format, um, make sure that you lock in that 30 frames per second. Um, one cool thing that's located or, or uh, used on our receivers themselves is that we can pass through that HDR content or we can strip that HDR content based on the display that's being used. So we can pass through HDR or even strip it or downgrade that HDR content if it's needed individually to each one of those receivers. But probably the coolest feature when it deals with our 4K models is being able to have a mix and match resolution setting um, in your project. Um, either say in 4K, 1080, to any 4K, 1080, 720, 480s um, display, you're able to do that. Each one of the receivers have a scaler built in um, that allows you to say, send a 4K source to a 480 display um, without any kind of issues, as well as a 4K source to a 4K HDR display. It doesn't matter. We are not gonna dumb down the resolution within to the lowest common denominator in the system. Each one of the receivers are going to be able to handle that 4K content that's coming through and either pass it through or um, downscale that resolution based on whatever that resolution is needed for the display. Your different control options, every one of the pieces, which uh, happened, I think, early last year, but every one of our pieces can do CEC over IP um, if that's what's needed. Uh, I recommend sticking with Sony, LG, and Samsung for CEC. Anything outside of that, you might have a headache being able to do the CEC coming from the Just Add Power pieces just because those commands are just um, a little bit all over the place when it deals with other manufacturers. But if you're utilizing CEC, I uh, highly recommend Sony works the easiest. Um, but you're able to utilize CEC for power on, power off, uh, being able to go into the menus. You do have the option of going into and adding more CEC commands so you have full CEC control of the displays themselves, but you do have the ability to use CEC for uh, just that power. Serial command or RS-232, each one of the pieces had that capability, as well as R uh, IR. So you're not utilizing IR, no, I'm sorry, RS-232 or serial. Um, you can turn it, each one of those RS-232 serial ports into IR to have full control of your endpoints, power on, power off, uh, volume on, volume off. Um, this all works independently. Whatever command that you're sending to that TV will go to that TV. So just so you don't, you're, you're seeing a lot of manufacturers now that are sending one IR command to every one of the TVs themselves, um, and sometimes it's not working. So, hey, I want to just turn on the volume on one of the TVs. You're actually sending that command to every one of your displays, and all your displays are turning the volume on. In this case, it's an individual command that's sent to an individual receiver with IR, and you have full control of the individual units, whatever way that you want to utilize it. Switches. I kind of went over unmanaged and managed switches. Managed switch is going to be with switching, so multiple inputs, multiple outputs. Unmanaged switch would be utilized for one input going to multiple outputs, uh, but you can use either one of those switches. I need to update my list here when it deals with the switches. Luxo came out with a couple new ones. Um, I think the 1816 and one other one. Can't remember. Anyway, so you got the 1208, the 2616, 
If you are going to go bigger outside of a 24 port, you do have the ability to stack the 4424, or even outside of the 48 port, you do have the ability to stack the 7048. Um, the software does uh, is configurable with the newer Luxel switches that are out there with our JAD config. But really, like I said, your hardest decision is to make sure that you have a network switch that's going to house your system. Um, the math to make sure that you have enough inputs and outputs or ports on the switch is going to be how many transmitters, how many receivers, plus one. Port one will always be utilized for either the control system or for the network itself. Um, but you're always going to um, use port one for those two devices. Everything else will be used for just add power transmitters and just add power receivers. Whatever ports that aren't utilized, so if it's a bigger switch, um, on a smaller system, any one of the open ports that are on there that aren't configured by Just Add Power can be configured um, to utilize network access. Uh, so maybe the original network switch has run out of ports, and in, emer in an emergency, um, the end user, well, specifically the integrator, wants to utilize network access onto that, that uh, Just Add Power or Luxel um, network switch, they are able to do that because of the software that we're going to be using. So very quickly, multicast from to um, VLAN switching. Really what you're going to see the difference between Just Add Power and any competitor that's doing AV over IP is going to be that. Just Add Power does VLAN switching and does multicast switching. Specifically, um, we do VLAN switching because of the ability to do instant switching more feature set, and very expandable, so bigger systems can be done with VLAN switching. However, um, we can do multicast switching. All of the competitors are doing multicast switching. And the difference between the two is multicast switching really is all done within a single VLAN. So there is some manual configuration that's being done by the integrator. They're going to that network switch. They are creating a separate VLAN for the um, – for your video distribution switching. So what you're going to see with a lot of competitors is that uh, integrator is going to go in and they are going to manipulate or create a single VLAN for video distribution um, within that network switch. Um, and that, that allows them to put any transmitter, any receiver on any port possible. Um, what's really good about that is that you don't have to be port specific on where those transmitters or receivers are going to go. Um, what becomes an issue around that is once that system goes outside of a certain static form, um, you are going to have lagging when it deals with your switching, um, as well as you're very limited on how big the system's going to be. Um, for us to, as well as in many cases, depending on the manufacturer, the network is also going to be on that same VLAN. Um, what we're trying to do or what we do is we isolate every one of your video traffic from individual sources as well as the network itself. I think the other piece that, depending on your manufacturer, you are going to use a separate control box. So control box is going to be connected to their network switch, and then you create a separate VLAN within that network switch. Um, but when you're dealing with just that power and VLAN switching, um, what we're doing is creating a VLAN for every one of your sources. There's not going to be any kind of manual manipulation that the integrator is going to have to do to that network switch because the software is going to do it for you. And by utilizing that software, you are telling every one of those sources to be on its, same, on its own separate VLAN as well as every one of those receivers to be on a VLAN as well as the network itself to be on a separate VLAN. So no interference to the network backbone, as well as no interference allows for instant switching when it deals with the Just Add Power pieces. So configuration-wise, the things that you're, they're going to be utilized to do a configuration of a recommended switch is being able to connect directly from your computer to the network switch. Console cables usually come with the um, brand-new network switches when they're purchased through Davis. Um, you are going to need some kind of USB to serial adapter that's going to connect to that console cable that connects directly to your, your network switch or your computer. It needs to be a Windows computer. Um, there's a lot of integrators out there that are using virtual machines um, using Macs. 
Um, it has worked, and they've been using it for a long time, and it hasn't had any kind of issues. If you talk to our support team, they're going to let you know it has to be a Windows computer. Um, the software that's being used is a Windows-based software, and in many cases, um, any kind of updates that happen to our software is going to be indicated through Windows, and a lot of times with those virtual machines, the updates to that isn't as fast enough to catch up to the software that we're using. So a simple netbook, it's not a labor-intensive piece of software. Um, a, a simple Windows-based computer can be used, or netbook can be used for this. But all software is located on the website, support.justadpower.com. The piece of software that's going to be used is called JAD Config. Um, the one that I have on the left there is an older version of it, but I have some newer versions. That way you see what it looks like. Um, drivers are located on the same website, the support.justadpower.com. Um, RTI, AMX, Control 4, as well as Crestron are Just Add Power drivers. That being said, if those drivers are downloaded and used or uh, those processors are used, there will be a license that's needed to unlock that driver. Um, that can be sent to our, our support team that they will just send you a very quick license that unlocks that, um, that device itself or that piece of software. But URC, Elan, Savant, and there's many more out there as in control system-wise, um, they do have drivers or profiles created for just that power, they can be utilized. Savant has a brand new one, or uh, there is an individual that created a brand new one for Savant. I know for sure Elon has one, and I know for sure that URC has one directly with them. Um, but it's a matter of just downloading, and I know that, it, that they all work. So configuration-wise, and this is what the, the new configuration software looks like, and I'm not gonna go step-by-step, step, but I just wanna show you what it looks like. So the configuration software is going to allow you to do a couple different things. It's going to allow you to set up a new system. It's going to be able to test your system. So I encourage to do um, configuration off-site. Uh, so tell your integrators to order the product, configure the product off-site. So when they get to site, um, they're not having to handle any kind of troubleshooting issues. They can test everything off-site after the configuration is done. They'll also be able to configure a single device if they need to, uh, or even push a firmware update directly through this piece of software. So it has a couple different functions. But the main function would be being able to set up a new system. So setting up that new system off-site can be utilized in two uh, different ways, either directly through a router. So if it's a brand new system, they have the router um, all purchased through Davis, and they're getting ready to set it up. Um, if they're using that router, the software will recognize that they're using that router and they'll let them know how they need to connect directly onto the network switch and the computer itself. Or they can do the configuration directly to the network switch. Um, they are going to need to know the IP address of the network switch itself, and then you'll be able in the next screen to utilize or be able to indicate which IT scheme outside of the network backbone that you're going to use for the Just Add Power system itself. But it's very self-explanatory. It's all a drop-down box. Um, it asks, asks you how many transmitters, how many receivers are going to be utilized in the system. And after all that's been told to the software itself, it does a full configuration of the, of the network switch, uh, as well as the Just Add Power pieces, giving an IP address to every one of the Just Add Power pieces, as well as setting up that network switch to be able to run Just Add Power. There is one separate step um, that the integrator must do in order to be able to do video over IP or Just Add Power over IP itself, is that you will have to create a static route um, within the router itself in order to utilize a lot of the features that's used in Just Add Power. Um, so going into the, the router, so they will need to use a router that allows for static routing and creating the static route and the numbers or the, the uh, IP addresses that are going to be utilized are going to be given to that integrator when the configuration process is going to be done, but they're going to put in the IP scheme that's being used for the Just Add Power piece, the network um, IP address, as well as the uh, subnet all being put into the system itself. Just a fun little slide of why we use static IP. 
or why you have to use static IP when it deals with a, a majority of the feature sets that's being used by Just Add Power? So once that's done, when it deals with the configuration of Just Add Power, that is complete. There is nothing needed to be done to the individual pieces of the network switch or even the Just Add Power pieces. It's been configured based on the input that you've put into it. The next would be the configuration process or the programming process being done by the integrator. Drivers are located on the website. Those four that you see there are drivers by Just Add Power. You will have to provide a license key within that driver to unlock it. Um, and it's a matter of sending the MAC ID or the processor ID to the, our support team, and it's a cut and paste process for them. They just send you back the license key, and it unlocks that, that, um, that driver for them. It is two drivers, a switching driver for the actual network switch, as well as a driver for your endpoints, which would be your transmitters and your receivers. But there are third-party pieces of software as well as hardware that utilize just that power. They have all their drivers located in either their support forums or any one of their um, different uh, merchant websites that allow them to download the drivers themselves or even their software pieces that you can download that utilize just that power. This new piece that we have is called Switch Please. So this is outside being used, you, utilized in a third-party software piece or as well as a third-party control um, processor. But this allows you, free of charge, to utilize anything with the web-based browser to do only switching of the Just Add Power pieces. Um, so it's a matter of just going to the IP address of any one of the Just Add Power pieces. It allows you to see every one of the sources or transmitters, every one of the receivers in there, as well as label accordingly, and then allows you to do switching. So it's a very simple way of doing switching. It doesn't take the full um, replacement of a control system because control systems or control processors have a lot more capabilities with it. But if they're just needing simple switching source to source on that um, display or many displays, they're able to utilize this from an iPhone, um, a Nintendo Switch, we've seen it being used, but anything with an IP browser will be able to utilize this free of charge through Just Add Power. So I need to change this slide, but um, hopefully everyone has seen uh, the newest update when it deals with Just Add Power system. Um, warranty has been changed to five years, and that includes any of our previous or any of um, systems that are out there that are 3G or 2G Omega. Any of the black boxes that are out there in the field um, had a five-year warranty starting from the purchase date that they had in there as well as anything that's purchased new going forward. So very uh, revolutionary when it deals with warranty and standing behind the product and it's full warranty on the pieces from device replacement. Uh, we always have support. We still support our first G um, product themselves as well as our second generation product when it deals with troubleshooting. Um, but this would be full replacement of any kind of um, non-functioning units that are out there in the field. Just an example of all the kind of commercial uh, commercial projects that are out there, uh, a, a crazy variety of where you're seeing just that power being used from restaurants, bars, um, corporate campuses, uh, to, I don't know, the Met, op Met Opera. It, it's all over the place, casinos. So it, what's really good about the just that power system is the flexibility as well as um, it's almost a one-stop shop that, Hey, if I've done a two by four system and I've configured a two by four system, it's the same way of doing a 20 by 30 system. It's just more inputs and outputs. Might take a little bit more time for that software to do the configuration of your pieces in your network switch, but the step by step process is exactly the same. Nothing's going to change and it works for every one of our pieces. So um, using in a 1080 or even a 4K format, it's all the same. Cool. That's it, guys. Ran through that pretty quick. Sorry, uh, went way over the hour, but really wanted to touch upon those things. I don't know if there's any kind of questions that you want me to hit up on um, or any kind of information that you want me to shoot out to you, um, but I'm open for questions if there's any out there.
Is this <clears throat> is this uh, PowerPoint or this webinar available to us in PowerPoint form? I can send this out in PowerPoint form. form. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, we just want to thank you for taking the time today. Um, we appreciate it. This is, was very, very thorough, and I think it was really helpful to us. So um, thank you, Alf. Really appreciate your time. Awesome. Cool, guys. All right. Appreciate thank you guys you, taking the time out. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good day. Bye.